For a closer look at the nuclear crisis, we are joined by Cham Dallas. He is a professor at the University of Georgia and CBS News nuclear safety consultant. Thanks for being with us, Cham. I think first and foremost, people want to know, after we see all of the news that's transpired over the last few days, how serious is the situation at the nuclear power plant in Japan? Well, this uh, entire situation took a big turn when they used the word meltdown mm -hmm. back over the weekend. And even then, I thought that uh, we'd have a little bit partial melting uh, and then it would be over. And this crisis just keeps going on and on. As you know, I spent 10 years at Chernobyl uh, watching a real total meltdown. And that was just one event and then we had to face the consequences afterwards. This has been a continuous, every day, a new uh, decrease. It, things go down each day. Right. Um, and it, 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 it is increasingly serious. It turned out, started out to be a real problem for the Japanese, economically and socially. Um, but in the last day or two, it's now becoming a, uh, a hazard for them uh, in, a, in an environmental and health hazard it's point of view. It's been a real roller coaster watching, you know, the fires, then they're put out, and then the radiation level. Help us understand in the most mm -hmm. simple terms what exactly is happening. Okay, what has happened is that they had an earthquake there, and the good news is, starting off, is they had uh, 11 reactors shut down, and they shut down the correct way. Uh, you sh how do you turn off a reactor? Well, you, you drop the control rods into the reactor. It's like turning a stove off. You want mm -hmm. to turn your stove off, you turn the stove off, and it remains hot for a while, and eventually it cools off. Nuclear reactors, same way. You turn it off by dropping the control rods in, and that turns off the fission reaction. Well, the problem is it still stays hot, not for a little while like your stove. It stays hot for weeks, and you have to cool it with water. Okay. And that's where the problems began. They turned 11 reactors off successfully when the earthquake happened. The problem is a tsunami occurred. They planned for a 25-foot wave, and they got a 30-foot wave, and so they got water in there, and their backup electrical systems went down. The electricity was off because of the earthquake. Their backup diesel generators failed, 13 of them. Mm. And then they were working on batteries. You see, you have to complete, you have to continue cooling those reactor cores. They are really hot. They're because hot for weeks. at one point they were even dumping seawater into them uh, as a last ditch effort, right? That's the last ditch effort. The batteries finally failed and they started uncovering the nuclear core. And the best way to think about it is like a candle. It, it, a nuclear core is like a bundle of candles. It burns from the top down. Mm -hmm. And so when they started uncovering that reactor core, the top, which was uncovered, now it's hot, no water, taking the heat away, it started melting like a candle would melt from the top down. And so that's when they, they kind of did the Hail Mary pass with uh, starting to pour seawater in there because they have to keep Can that core. Can the plant be saved? Can this crisis be averted? Well, this, the first question, can the plant be saved? The answer is no. It can't, it'll never be used again for electricity. That's for certain. Uh, can it be saved from a total meltdown? I hope so. Uh, I would assume that they're going to keep that reactor core covered. They, that's the key. They've got to keep that reactor core covered with water or they won't save it. And worst case scenario would be what? The worst case scenario, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that because new things keep happening. That's the thing. I mean, yeah. we're, all, we're all hearing this news come in fast and furious, and once, you know, it's one bad thing after another, and so everyone wants to know, all right, what should we be prepared for? Well, the worst case scenario is, is for some reason, they can't keep those cores covered, uh, and, and they continue to melt down. Now, the good news is, is that Chernobyl, why was Chernobyl such a big deal? That's because they never got those control rods in there in the first place. Mm. So they failed. We're already past Chernobyl because we did shut the reactors off. However, the worst case scenario is for some reason they can't keep that water under those reactor cores um, and they'll continue to melt down. And then if we have some more fires like we had recently, then some of that radioactivity will go up into the air. Let's talk about the people who live near there. There's obviously been an evacuation. Some 140,000 people have been told to stay indoors, seal yourself in. Does that work? Yes, that's actually very effective. That, that's very sound uh, counsel to them. Uh, they evacuated the zone immediately around the reactor, and then the next zone, they told them to go indoors. That's the best thing to do. You can cut your dose down uh, by uh, 50, 60, 80 percent by just going inside. But yeah, because I was talking last night with an expert who says, you know, none of your senses can detect the fact that you've been exposed right. to radiation. So that being the case, you know, people are worried about not only coming in contact with it, but how far could it spread? Do you know? Well, uh, there's the big question. Right now, it's just really uh, around the reactor area. I mean, you can detect 
uh, radiation in Tokyo, but it's very, very low level. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a hazard in Tokyo. Um, will it go farther out? Uh, the first thing I'd like to say, I don't know if you're moving on to California. Well, yeah, that's uh, what okay. I was going to get well, to. Get to will that people in, in the United States have something to be worried about yeah. when it comes to this? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the Japanese thing. Uh, it's probably going to stay in the immediate area around Japan as far as a, a, a higher level unless we get that worst case scenario. With the winds. With the winds. Mm -hmm. And a, a more of a meltdown. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a total meltdown, but a, where the candle burns down right. farther uh, and melts down and it liberates more radioactivity in the air. Um, the big question, will it reach the United States? Right. My belief is it will not, and this is why. Uh, Chernobyl, which I identified earlier as the real bad problem, was the real bad boy example of what could happen. That was a total meltdown, a, a fire, it was in the air, it was all over Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, that East European area, but it had no detectable effect in Europe and certainly not in the United mm -hmm. States. So if we have a situation in Chernobyl, which is a hundred times worse than what we're seeing here right now, and that didn't reach America, then how is it that this lesser problem would reach America? I don't think it's going to happen. I want to just go back to, you know, what precautions were taken in, in the first place because, you know, no one really knows when anything like this is going to hit, but obviously precautions have been put in place. I mean, did the Japanese do everything that they could do or were there mistakes? There were mistakes. Uh, the Japanese are, are really uh, into preparedness. They're a rich nation. Uh, they're very meticulous, high engineering, a lot of high quality there. Um, and I'm, frankly, a little surprised. Really? I, I am. I, so. I, well, I, I expected them to do better. Uh, where the things broke down here was, like the, I talked about earlier, they planned for a 25-foot tsunami, and they got a 30-foot. Mm -hmm. How much harder would it have been to make a bigger wall? You know? um, where the failures here were in simple things. Um, the diesel generators broke down. How hard is that to do? Diesel generators not high technology. They brought in emergency diesel generators and had the wrong plugs. And, and you know, things like that, um, you can't make mistakes like that. Um, on the other hand, um, the, uh, the, uh, the bravery of the people that are in the operator room, uh, 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 like uh, I know uh, one of the people that's in operating room number right one now. right now, the bravery of those people uh, cannot be overestimated. It, it, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're going to stay in there and they're going to see this through. And, and so, you know, there were mistakes made, true, and there were some problems in the upper levels of the government there not giving us enough information. You know, information is, it's important to be straight with people in a crisis like this. Absolutely, and there are people, as you said, right there um, inside that plant putting their lives on the line at this hour trying to save this. That's Cham right. Dallas, we appreciate your information. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. CBS Nuclear Safety Consultant Cham Dallas joining us.